You could be watching paint dry, or you could watch me set up my M4 Max Mac Studio in the most boring way possible using Ansible. I just got this in from the mail, and it will be replacing another M1 Max Mac Studio. I still can't get over saying that. Uh, well, that's nice. Apple always has a nice unboxing uh, experience. But this is not an unboxing channel. I just want to get this out. I want to get back to work. And uh, the main reason I'm upgrading is for Apple's media engine, encoding performance, that kind of thing, because I do a good amount of transcoding uh, to prep for my um, videos on this YouTube channel and on Jeff Gearling and on Gearling Engineering. And the M1 Max is great. It's very fast, but I noticed that my M4 Mini is actually faster than my M1 Max at transcoding video. So I wanted to uh, have a Mac here at the studio. That's the one that I use at home, the M4 Mini. I wanted one at the studio that's just as fast or faster, hopefully a lot faster, because I, this is where I do my work that earns income so I can pay for health insurance and also my much smaller mortgage. Anyway, uh, I think that's everything. This is a strange, uh, look at this packaging. This is, it's literally origami. I don't know. But yeah, this is not, not an unboxing video. There's a thing up here with manuals or something, I don't know. But yeah, there's, there's that. They have a handle on it, but it, that kind of works. I don't know. I'm just going to stick this in my cabinet, so. Okay. Mac Studio. It looks so far identical to my old Mac Studio. More origami. I would hate to be the person that has to put these things together like 24 seven. I feel sorry for you. And uh, the cable is nice. Apple has done a better job in recent years of making cables that don't turn into sticky goo. Uh, and I like the fact that it has an internal power supply because I hate it when you have a giant power brick with your new computer. Okay, and then we'll take off all of this stuff, which it's like paper. And I've already torn it. There it is. Mac Studio. It looks, it, it literally looks identical to my old M1 Max Mac Studio. It has SD card slot, two, I think these are USB-C. I don't know if they're USB 3.2 Gen 2 or what. I think they just do 10 gigabits. Uh, and on the back side, you have four Thunderbolt 5, I believe. I don't know. As long as they're at least Thunderbolt 4, I'm not losing any bandwidth there. A 10 gigabit Ethernet port, which is useful for me. I wish there was an option for SFP or for 25 gig, uh, but whatever. That's, uh, it's, it's good enough. Uh, two USB 3.2 Gen 2, maybe? I don't, I don't know what these ports are. I wish that Apple like made it easier to know what speeds of USB ports you're getting. HDMI, probably 2.1. I don't know. This, this, this is not a review of the Mac Studio. I'm just showing you a very boring video about me setting it up because people have been interested in the past in how I set up my Macs so quickly without restoring anything from a backup. I'm going to transfer all my data from my old Mac Studio to this Mac Studio with no backups whatsoever. How do I do that? I don't know. I could be really fancy and route this cable somewhere, or I can just set it right on my desktop here, which I'll do. And I have this amazing capture card that works sometimes. But this is a level two Jeff video, so if it doesn't work, don't blame me. All right, I'm gonna do that. And then I have my, my trusty old Apple keyboard and a Logitech mouse. Over at my desk, I am testing some other keyboards right now. People have gotten me into mechanical keyboards and that is an addiction that I do not need right now, but I have, I dove head first right into it. So it's my own fault. And I'll plug it in because wired is always better than wireless, says the guy who has invested a lot of money into wireless access points over the years. And let's boot you up. There we go. It's set up. This, after working with the uh, M4 Mini, this does look like comically large. I was going to say, it, it used to be the same size as the uh, regular Mac Mini. See that? But uh, the new one is like this big. So this, this just looks, it looks weird. I don't know. After using the M4 Mini, this one looks a little bit weird to me. Uh, my monitor's not on, so let's turn that on. And uh, maybe I'll start recording the screen. I hope this will work. 
Oh, there we are. Okay, I'm going to hit record. Okay, we're recording. So hopefully the screen recording comes through. I don't know if it will or not. Also adjust this camera over here so you can see what I'm doing. If, if the uh, screen recording doesn't work, this video could go completely off the rails. Am I even recording? Yes, I am. Okay, that's good. Okay, let's uh, do this. English. And we're at 1080p, even though this is a 4K monitor, because I don't think I had it turned on, so it was passing through just 1080p. Continue. No. I'm going to set all these settings later automatically with Ansible, so I don't care about it right now. Uh, software update is available. I'm going to update later. Uh, no, I don't want to restore sign-in. Now, you don't have to set up an iCloud account. A lot of people comment, whenever I complain about Microsoft forcing you to require an account and using registry hacks and stuff, I don't have to do this. Some people, whenever I mention that, are like, oh, you use a Mac. Obviously, Apple's just as evil as Microsoft. It's like, Apple's evil in different ways. Anyway, I could click set up later and not ever set up iCloud. I don't have to, but I will because there's a couple integrations with uh, the App Store and things that I use in my automation that make it easier to set up a Mac and to have all my settings migrate from Mac to Mac. So anyway, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to cut from here to now. It's, uh, I had to sign into the iCloud account, and for some reason, every time I do this for the past, like, five years, it tries to send the notification, it pops up on my phone, and then it disappears within, like, half a second. So I had to eventually, like, click through and say, send me a text message, which is less secure. Thanks, Apple. Yeah, I'd rather not have Apple intelligence. Welcome to Mac. Okay. We are in... Almost. And... It's funny that I can't identify this keyboard. It's literally Apple's own keyboard. To the right of the shift key on the left side. <laughs> I don't, there's no other keyboard that I know of, so I'm just going to quit this, uh, whatever. Okay, no, I don't want, I don't want Genmoji. Please, no, no. I want to turn off all of this. Okay, good. It's not. It's not on by default. That's good. No, I really don't. I want to get rid of this thing. Go away. Don't ever come back. Go go away. So I'm here on the desktop, and uh, this is not... I don't want this desktop background. I don't want the dock to be so huge. I'm missing all my apps. How am I going to get all this stuff? I could do a time machine restore, but that would take like 6 to 12 hours, probably longer, because I have like 2 terabytes of stuff on my hard drive. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to uh, install Ansible and use my Mac Dev playbook to uh, get this thing going. So no, try tonight. I don't care about that. No, nope. go away. So if I go to Mac Dev playbook, look at that. It's the top suggested result. And uh, we're going to go through the process here. And I'm going to reverse the scrolling direction on this mouse because this is killing me. If I have a mouse like this, I don't want the natural scrolling. But that's what Apple defaults to. So we want to do this. Xcode select install. Go into terminal and do that. Go ahead and install all those. 26 hours. Okay, never mind. <laughs> One minute. <laughs> oh, progress bars. I do not know why this is taking so long. This is usually a bit quicker. But I'm going to do my old trick of having the mouse at the progress bar and see how that goes. And I'm going to start the uh, recording again in just a minute here because this has just taken absolutely forever. All right, we're back in business. The software was installed. That took a little bit longer than I expected. Uh, but now I need to install Ansible. And we have a little bit of a chicken and egg problem because I want to install Ansible automatically. But I can't do that because uh, Ansible is the thing that I use to automatically install things. So I'm going to run these commands here to uh, make sure that I have all the latest stuff to install Ansible. Upgrading pip, and I will install Ansible. And I'll make this a little bigger so you can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, and then I need to install the requirements. I need to clone this repository, so I'm going to grab it. Code, copy. Okay, git clone, paste it in, cd mac dev playbook, 
Uh, let's see, then I need to install requirements. This is the roles and things that will set this thing up. Okay, and we're gonna do this. Now, uh, before I do this, I'm actually gonna grab my config off my other computer, and I could just do that probably. Oh, uh, no, I, what, what just happened? I do not, I don't like that. I, I wanna go to my desktop, I think, I don't know. I just wanna go to Finder, that was weird. I'm gonna go old school and use a USB stick because networking is hard when you have lots of aliases set up. So I'm gonna grab the config out of here, copy and paste. And let's see what that looks like, text edit. So I have all of my uh, applications set up here. Let me make sure that I have the right things in here because it's been a while, 2025, yep, 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 okay. But now that I have that, I can run this, paste. I'll make this bigger so we can see what's going on. Uh, okay, here we go. And that's it. That's literally how I set up my new Mac. Uh, there's a few other things that I need to do after this. I need to sign into Dropbox. I need to sign into Adobe Premiere or whatever, Adobe Creative Cloud, uh, things like that. Um, but those are things that you have to do either way. I think even Fusion 360 requires a sign in now. Everything's a web app. I hate it. But uh, anyway, that's, that's what I do to set up a new Mac. And all of my other stuff is either on my network, so I operate off a of NAS for my video editing and all that, or uh, there's stuff inside of Git repositories and stuff like that. And then everything else is in my Dropbox, and then I symlink some stuff from my Dropbox into the right places for configurations, for open source packages, or for other software. So it's all contained in my Ansible playbook, and that's it. I'm not going to show you this whole process because, like I said, it's very boring. Uh, you don't need to see the whole process. That's basically it. And the cool thing is, if I make a change in my configuration, I can apply it to this Mac. I can also do it to the one at home, and I can do it to my laptop. Uh, you can do this on Linux. You could, I think you could even do it on Windows. I've never seen someone set up their actual Windows workstation with Ansible, but I do my Mac with Ansible. I do most of my Linux servers with Ansible. And uh, the other thing that I've been trying out lately is Pi Infra. I have not tried that on a Mac, but I've tried it on a lot of Linux things, and uh, I like it too. It's very simple. Anyway, that's Level 2 Jeff for you. It's asking for my password again, so I'm going to type that again, and I'm going to say goodbye, and hopefully I can make at least like $50 off this video to pay for like one-tenth of the 64 gig RAM upgrade I paid for. I, I will offer a tiny bit more context, I guess, before I go. Uh, this, this process takes, you know, 30, 45 minutes at least to get all the different things installed. And I do have to enter my password like five times. There's no way around that, unfortunately, with the way that uh, these applications are installed. And also, I have a document here that goes through my full setup. And there are more manual steps involved. Like I said, signing into different things. I also have to set up my Fastmail account, which is a manual step right now. There might be ways to automate some of these things, but a lot of it, it's like it, you have that graph on XQCD of how long it takes to do something versus how effective it is to automate it. And most of these things are things I do one time ever per Mac, and automating it might take hours. So it's not really that big a deal when this takes like 10 seconds. So anyway, if you want to find out how this all works, I have videos on it on my main uh, Jeff Gearling channel. Uh, I think I've done one or two in the past. And there's a lot of documentation. So check it out. If you want to set up your own Mac this way, that's awesome. If you don't, that's great too. Uh, you can also use Time Machine. No problem with that. But uh, I like setting up Macs completely from scratch because there's always junk that gets stuck on your computer. And if you keep upgrading it year over year and keep restoring from Time Machine, you're going to have all this baggage that kind of comes along with you and causes little problems down the road. I mean, it's bad enough using a new Mac and finding the software bugs Apple introduces from trying to make everything like iOS already, so why add the added grief of having baggage from the past, like, 12 years of your, your Mac use uh, also mixing in with that? Anyway, like I said, this is Level 2 Jeff, and I am out of here. Oh, you thought we were finished with this video, but this is Level 2 Jeff. We get crazy here. Uh, I wanted to show you a few things in case you are wondering about buying one of these things. I know a lot of people that watch this channel don't care at all about Macs, uh, but some people do. 
and it's a pretty big uh, purchasing decision. So I wanted to go through some of my benchmarks really quick. It's This is not a review of the M4 Max, Mac Studio. And to, to do a review, I would usually do a lot more benchmarking, not just like 10 or so benchmarks. So anyway, take these with a grain of salt, especially the power measurement, because I did not connect it to my uh, very fancy power monitors. This is just with a, a little cheap uh, IoT wall wall monitor. Anyway, idle is between 7 to 12 watts, sometimes peaking up to 20 watts, uh, with 10 gigabit Ethernet connected 12 watts, so it, it idles pretty low. That's that, but then I also tested my top 500 benchmark, which is the high performance LIN pack. It's FP64 performance and uh, double precision, which is better than like AI model type things. And this Mac gets uh, between 600 to 700 gigaflops. This was, uh, I tested, it, whenever I do these tests, I test them a couple different ways. And this is testing through Docker, so there's probably a tiny bit of overhead loss there. So this is not the absolute maximum performance for double precision, but uh, I'd say 680 gigaflops at 120 watts for 5.71 gigaflops per watt is pretty much what I'll say this, this does. And in terms of ranking that against other machines, this is now the second uh, second most efficient uh, ARM processor, actually second most efficient machine overall on my chart. And you can see that ARM is definitely still ruling the roost when it comes to efficiency. The thing that comes closest, I haven't tested the latest generation Intel chips. I need to do some of that testing, but I can guarantee they're not going to be up here in the top. Um, but anyway, so that's where that puts it in context. The M4 Mini, just the uh, the plain old M4, it's a smaller computer, so it uses less power anyway. But uh, that is going to be a little bit more efficient if that's what you care about the most. Uh, but I also did Geekbench. So where is that? Uh, there's my settings for Docker. I also did Geekbench and got just about uh, close to 4,000 single core, which is pretty good. Pretty darn good. It's the best, the best that I've tested on any computer yet. You can see my results here on my page. Uh, the next closest was the M4 Mac Mini, and then after that, the Snapdragon Dev Kit with the Snapdragon X Elite. But that thing burns up a lot of power, so it is not anywhere near Apple's uh, efficiency yet. And the multi-core is still a lot slower, of course, than the M4 Max. And there are other results on Geekbench that are even faster. Uh, these were just my preliminary test results, and I also did some testing on the SSD, and I got 3.5 to 4 gigabytes per second uh, writes and 4 to 5 gigabytes per second read speeds. These peaked a little bit higher, but this was about the average. Anyway, yeah, that's uh, third ending to this Level 2 Jeff video. And now I will actually go away. So thanks for watching.